Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to make a video real quick to go over some things that I think is extremely important right now uh, in training. It's something I have noticed in myself. I've noticed it in my students and talking to some other people. This is also something that's starting to happen and uh, I'm starting to see a direct correlation between that and this modern lifestyle, particularly with the way this pandemic has affected us. So I wanted to make a video to hopefully help you or at least enlighten you if you fall into this ailment uh, that you can take steps to start to correct it. So what is it? Well, first of all, I work from home most days of the week. Uh, you may be in the same boat. A lot of people are having to work from home. Their workstations are not designed for long periods of work or uh, or maybe you're somebody who likes to spend a lot of time playing video games and, and watching videos and, and things like that. And that through that long sustained sedentary process, the body has adapted to that in ways that is negatively affecting the quality of your Kamai and your Taijutsu, your structure and balance and your movement. So I hope this video helps you uh, to recognize that in yourself and maybe take some steps to start to fix that. I'm gonna offer um, my views on this and how you can really start today to start fixing these things uh, and not have to wait for you to be at the dojo to, to, to correct it. People make the mistake of training in their martial art only in the martial arts class that they're in when actually your life is made up of constant training opportunities and how you are, how your structure is set up, how your movement is, it's based on habits, patterns and habits. And the patterns and habits that you develop come from what you experience the most. It's what you repeat the most. So your dojo experience, you may only be limiting, or you may only be limited to training in the dojo one day, two days a week, or, or whatever, maybe less than that. But if you compare that against your everyday activities, how you are at work, how you are at home, just in your everyday, those patterns you have developed in your everyday life completely overshadow what you do in the dojo. So this is something that I think you could do right now that would start to help change that. So what you're doing in your, in your outside dojo time if you start focusing on these things, it's going to directly impact in a positive way what you do during your dojo training. So let's start with really kind of the, the, the premise of this video or the main point of this video, and it's your core structure. The core structure of your body, you sit at this computer, and this is my at home, my work office, but you're sitting at your computer and for a lot of people, and I notice this in my workplace and, and different places I've worked with too, is that, and I've even noticed it with myself when I get tired, there's a tendency to bring the shoulder blades out. So the shoulder blades come out, the shoulders themselves curve. So this line becomes an inward curve and the back slouches and the belly <laughs> kind of pooches out and the arms are forward and the head is forward and you're working. Especially when you're working very concentrated detailed work, there's a tendency to want to do this. But the other aspect or the other uh, extreme example of that is the back of the chair, this idea of using the back of the chair as a leaning post to then slouch the body and extend the arms forward, extend the head forward and be doing your thing like this. These are horrible to your body. It's destroying your taijutsu. It's destroying your kamai. And our modern culture has, has really developed us to where the, this is our natural state, is completely ineffective, broken structures, bad balance, and, every, and, and everything is associated to that. And by having this front part of the body collapsing in, what's happening is it's causing strain on the organs and it's not allowing for, for full breath and the circulatory system becomes constrained, all your fluid running, your nervous system, everything becomes constrained in this area right here. And we develop all kinds of health problems from that. Um, also, the core, 
our core is relaxed. We relax our core and as a result, we lose the, the muscle strength, the core stability becomes negatively affected by that. The back muscles, because our backs are like this, there's nothing pulling and keeping our structure, those muscles become weak. We actually get atrophy. Muscles and connective tissues dissolve from lack of use. We become weaker, just structurally weaker. And that's something that as a culture, as a human species, we need to change because we were not designed to be that way. We were not designed for this lifestyle. And martial arts didn't come from this lifestyle. And so we, in order for us to really see the positive effects in our training, we need to first begin with changing some of these negative habits in ourselves. So let's look at our workstation, how we are at work. Boom. How do I fix this? First of all, let's take a look at our core. Everything is seated in our core. If I take my core and I take my lower back and I straighten the lumbar and then let it have that natural inward curve, imagine, you're, imagine you have a tail. How would you sit? If your tailbone went the other way, how would you sit? So now when you do that, you're going to find that you, have, you get your lumbar curve back. Once you get that lumbar curve back, tighten this right here. Tighten the sides in the front. Just bring it in. Not a crazy flexation, but just like you could still breathe, but it's, but it's got some flexation here. That's called core activation. So you're, you're holding this mid structure using a slight flexation of the muscles. Now it's going to feel uncomfortable because we're not used to it. Our bodies have, an, our bodies have adapted to, to relax. We're trying to bring that adaptation. We're trying to reverse that adaptation to bring our bodies back to having a good core structure. So this is gonna be uncomfortable. It's a conditioning thing. So you have to flex this to hold that. Get yourself off the back of the chair. Just get off the back of the chair. Next, allow the body energy to come up and over the top of the shoulders to bring the shoulder blades back and down. So you still have this flex, you still have the natural curve, but the shoulder blades become back and settled down. Your head, you bring your head back and level and bring the ears to be more in line with the shoulders. And this is your proper structure. Now, when you're reaching forward, if you're sitting too far away and you're reaching forward where now those shoulder blades come apart, that's incorrect. Now you need to look at what is my radius? When I maintain this structure here and I bring my arms out, what's my radius? What's the farthest that I can reach without losing this? Learn what that distance is. Because when you're doing techniques, when you're training, that becomes really important. That's your, that's, that's a good, that's your controlled distance. That's where you're able to keep this structure. You have a satri center, a center line that runs through the direct center of the body and you're building your structure around that line in layers that you don't want to pull away from that line. So when I'm reaching out, I don't want to do it in a way that creates that break. I want to keep this structure and no matter which way I'm reaching, whether it's a ski, shito, uh, uke, whatever it is, I'm going to keep my shoulder blades back and down, keep my head centered right, keep my core centered right so that I'm on that satrusin line so that now my arms can work in my radius. It's the same on my workspace. I want my arms to be comfortably out here, not up here where it's tight right here because then that's going to cause a strain to the connective tissues, but where my elbows can move naturally right here without the shoulder blades moving. I can keep the shoulder blades back and down and then just move my arms naturally here. I'm not leaning forward. Everything is still the same. Oh, this is all set. I can just do my work here. So that, that part, the, the core structure, core activation, shoulder blades back and down, head properly centered and, and level, and keeping my range, my effective distance in this sphere that's built around that core is the first way that you're going to greatly impact the quality of your taijutsu. Then when you're applying this in your training in your class, 
pay attention to when that breaks. You will see this a lot when it comes to any forward reaching Kamai or outward reaching strikes and movements. Watch for that to break. I'm not saying that it's that you have to always keep your shoulder blades back and down. But what you're trying to not do is you're not trying to bring the shoulders to, to the point where this happens with the body. So you still here, even if the shoulder blades come forward, you're still keeping this connection because the shoulder blades are going around this center, the center of the body, the core structure. The shoulder blades are going around and back and around and back. So even when you're doing things that involve that, you're going to bring the shoulder blades back. And I'll use the example of uh, Ichimanji no Kamai from Gyokuru. So for Ichimanji no Kamai, both, both arms are forward. So what you'll see a lot of times is the tendency for people to do that as they're doing, and I'm, I'm exaggerating it, but you'll see a degree of this where the shoulder blades come out and then the spine comes out from that. So it ends up doing this when people are in Kamai. When if they do that, practice bringing the, sh if you're doing that, practice bringing your shoulder blades back and down. Use the muscles between the shoulder blades to bring them together, bring them back and down. Then get your arms in the position that they need to be in for this, which if you know this come I, that's fine. If you don't, it's okay. But you, you understand the idea that I'm bringing my shoulder blades back and down to establish this right Kamai core here, shoulder blades back and down, and then the arms are coming out where they need to be to have that structure. Same thing when I'm doing my, uh, let's say I'm doing a downward cut with a sword, right? Shomen Gi, I'm doing a downward cut. The arms are up. So your shoulder blades kind of go like this because your arms are up. When I go to cut down, I want my shoulder blades to come back and down. I don't want my shoulder blades to be up and out and then come out. You'll see this a lot when people do downward cut, they'll do that. So what you want to do is keep this posture and bring the shoulder blades back and down as you do the cut to keep your core structure in line. So now you're able to stay in good form through the cut. You don't bring the shoulder up, it's not like that. Keep the shoulder blades down and come down. Same with Shuto, when I'm doing the Shuto, I wanna use my proper back and down, core structure here, shoulder blades back and down. Keep that, don't let that shoulder blade come out. Now, there are times the shoulder blades will come out. When you're extending beyond that, you're gonna do that. But understand that even if I'm doing, let's say it's ski, uh, forward lunging extended punch, the rear part of the body is what's gonna bring the shoulder blades together. So as I do that, it's, it's bringing the shoulder blades together. So um, you'll, you'll see like, it, some people will say it's ski, it's like drawing a bow, like, like a bow and arrow. It's the same idea. I'm using my shoulder blades to create the motion. When I'm doing a Jodanuki, my shoulder blades create the motion. This is what's really important to understand that when you are, um, when you're doing these movements, the importance of always coming back to the center core of the body with your shoulder blades back and down, keeping the core structure here. So you don't want to have that, or you get that, I don't even know if I can mimic it, but you know what I mean? Like you see the, the butt out and the belly's coming out. That's a product of our modern society of this very relaxed kind of position. So even when I'm doing my motion, if I keep this core throughout all my motion, no matter what I'm doing, I can do that and keep that, keep that strong. So that way it's not, it's not giving you this with the belly sticking out and the gut sticking out. So, Practice it in your day-to-day -day motion of how you sit, shoulder blades back and down, head up, centered, only reach so far to avoid breaking that structure and learn that distance and that radius and have all your movement come from that stable center. If you can practice that every day throughout your day, you're going to find that that translates into the dojo beautifully you're going to find improvements in your training happening without you even realizing it. It's just suddenly your, your training is going to just get better. Um, so I hope this helps you.
Uh, I hope it gives you something to take a look at in your own training and that it gives you some tools in order to fix that. If, you're, if your back muscles are weak, if you're having a hard time, maybe your core muscles are weak, there are some great exercises to help with that. Um, as far as your shoulder blades and your back muscles go, I recommend standing rows. What that is, is you stand and you have, you have a weight, maybe a bar or buckets or dumbbells, arch your back, push your butt out, arch your back nicely, allow your shoulder blades to come forward. Then when you go to start your movement, start with the shoulder blades, bring the shoulder blades together and then the arms and then back. So it's a two movement, one, two, right? You can do shrugs if you want, but I figure why not do the whole thing? But you can also just keep the shoulder blades together and practice doing it with just the arms, but I like the motion of the shoulder blades into this exercise. If you only have one weight, place your hand on the desk. You can put your opposite, or one hand on the desk, opposite leg back, Flatten your body, don't be to the side, keep your body flat. Make sure the back is straight. Again, same thing, allow this shoulder to come forward, then bring the shoulder blade back, then come back, then come forward, and come down. Those are just some exercises you can do to help you get those shoulder, the, the muscles between the shoulder blades to be stronger, to help the back muscles to support your structure. As far as the core goes, I like planking. Planking is great because planking is flexing of the core for a sustained length of time. And you have to be a plank. No dips or, or butt in the air, not, just nice, good, straight. There's a lot of different kinds of planks. I recommend doing all of them um, and really spending time with that. Get, get this back to being a good, solid foundation for your body structure and uh, you will find that that greatly benefits you in your training. So again, I hope you find this helpful. Please drop me a like and some comments. Um, let me know what you think. If that helps you, uh, please follow, subscribe for my channel. And um, you know, this pandemic has been murder on the martial arts, uh, but it's only been devastating to those who don't know how to adapt that martial arts themselves are meant to further your survival it's meant for you to survive and thrive during horrible terrific challenges that you have to you have to keep going and so this is a great example of how life throws curveballs at you and you either adapt and keep going or you don't and die. And in this situation here, seeing the decline of people and their health and their structures and how this sedentary life has, has really created these problems, uh, to me, that's not adapting to live. That's, that's just degressing back and, and becoming vulnerable where you're not gonna, you're gonna have health problems. So I recommend making this a primary focus for people. I recommend people getting their health back, getting their conditioning back, focusing on their range of motion, building those Budo bodies again, getting, getting that, that, that strong, vibrant, healthy core that, that they need, reclaiming the center, reclaiming, own your center as my new program is titled, own your center and, and let everything come from a, from a place of a strong, centered, uh, physical, mental, emotional state of being. And if you can put that as your primary focus, you will find that your not only does your martial arts practice improve, but everything about your life is going to improve from there. So again, thank you so much. And as I always say, stay happy, stay healthy, and keep training. Thanks.